Good afternoon. I am Shavina Baker and I am the diversity, equity, and inclusion educator for the Illinois CTE project team. And I would like to welcome you to the virtual trailhead series for career pathways. In collaboration with the Illinois State Board of Education, we come to you today with Shan Willis, who is the owner of Clean Air Radon Systems. During COVID, many of our students were not able to experience and go out to work-based learning or job shadowing and internships. Therefore, we created this series to give an opportunity for students to be able to watch videos from individuals who are from industry. So today we will have a discussion in regards to what it takes to become a radon mitigation technician. We are so excited to have you um, join us today, Shan. And the first thing we'd like to ask is a little bit about your background. Can you tell us just a little bit about your background? Sure, Shavina. Um, my background is that I have a BA in marketing communications from Columbia College in Chicago. And um, after I graduated from Columbia College in Chicago, I actually uh, got going right away in the sales field. I actually is one of those one of those statistical people that have never had a job in marketing communications because right out of college, I ended up getting a job and I just kind of followed suit with that. So this particular job was a sales job in which I was going door to door uh, selling long distance phone service to uh, businesses. Um, after after that job, I um, uh, ended up selling insurance with a company called NACE, which is the uh, National Association for the Self-Employed. So I got my insurance license, started selling insurance, very difficult job to do. Um, and then midway through that job, about three or four months in, a friend of mine who had become a branch manager at City Financial Mortgage calls me up one day. I never considered mortgages or anything in the finance industry because I hated math and I was horrible at it. And so she calls me up and is like, hey, Shan, I got this job. It's got a base salary plus commission. She told me the numbers. I was like, okay, but I don't do numbers. And she's like, don't worry about it. I'll teach you everything you need to know. It's pretty much doing the same thing over and over again. So I took the job and that's how I segued into the mortgage industry. So I stayed in the mortgage industry from say uh, 2002 up until 2008. And in 2008, I know a lot of younger people don't, don't realize what happened, but it was, a, it was a mortgage crisis. The bubble burst mm. and the company that I was working for went out of business almost overnight. And so um, I spent about 14 months unemployed. Um, the job market was very, very stiff, very tough at that time. And um, after about 14 months, my unemployment ran out. And I was like, well, you know, no one's biting at my resumes. I got to do something. So I had to really humble myself. And I took a job selling uh, Scott's lawn service, going door to door again, selling lawn service with 18, 19, 20 year old kids. Here I am a you know, 25, 26 year old man at the time. But you know, I had a young family, I had bills I had to pay. So I had to do what I had to do. And so I stayed there one year, one year and then I finally got a job at ADT security selling alarm systems. So this is, that was something that I thought that I would do pretty much for the rest of my life because I knew ADT had a great reputation. It's um, the number one company uh, on people's minds when they think about alarms. Um, the hardest job to make money at I've ever done in my life. And so what happened was um, my old friend Dave Massa, who owns another radon company, called me up and said, hey, Shan, I really could use your help. And so I went to work with a company called Radon Reduction Systems in which I had worked for him uh, earlier in my life during uh, my college years. And so we became good friends, kept in touch. And so he needed me and he didn't realize that I needed him more than he needed me at that time. So I went back to work with him 
and was doing radon uh, radon mitigation. And so I, I worked with him for about five years. Uh, when I first started working with him, I was basically just doing grunt work, just mm. uh, carrying, carrying his tools, doing caulking. And then little by little, he taught me to trade. He taught me how to run pipe. Then he'd teach me how to do the electric. Then he just uh, taught me how to look at things visually and spatially, how to implement these systems. And so my confidence grew more and more. And uh, I, uh, I remember asking him for a raise at one point. And he's like, well, Shan, you know, I, I, I want to give you a raise. But if you, if you really want to make more money with me, you got to become more valuable with me. Mm. And how you become more valuable with me is I need you to get a technician's license. So I took this course, um, took this, this very, very hard state test. Uh, and passed it. I actually failed it the first time, but I passed it the second time, and um, I became a technician. Now, in in the state of Illinois, because it's a regulated state, there are two different types of licenses. You can be a technician, or you can be a professional. Hmm. And so it's it's basically like the difference between a realtor and a broker. You know, a realtor can sell houses and a broker can sell houses, but a realtor has to sell houses under the license of a broker, whereas a broker, they're their own entity. And it's the same thing with a technician versus professional. So I had a technician's license at that time and I was working for for Dave. And so I did that for another few years. And then over time, you know, you start getting a lot of uh, compliments about my work. And I already knew that I was an, an affable type of guy. A lot of the customers, you know, they, they, they liked me and they would give me compliments. And so um, over a few years, I, I had this idea like, man, I, I need to make the next jump in income, right? Sure. And so I, I had this idea and I, and I came to him and I said, Dave, you know, I, I want to make a, another jump in income. So I had this idea. I, I've got a lot of relationships uh, with with realtors. Plus, I'm not scared to go in a realtor office or or knock on doors or do whatever I need to do to help build this business up. And so I, I wanted to get paid a commission off of the business that I brought in on top of what I was making. And he, he didn't go for that idea. And mm -hmm. I, I really thought it was a good idea because I sure. like, we both win. You, you know, your business increases and I make a little bit more money. Well, he didn't go for that idea. And uh, so I, I set a meeting with um, uh, a very successful um, black businessman that I know by the name of Steve Davis. And um, I, I told him my problem uh, or my issue and I, I asked him his advice on it. And he's like, well, have you ever thought about starting up your own business? And I said, yeah, I've, I've thought about it, but I didn't know how to really go about it or implement it or anything like that. Sure. And he says, I tell you, I tell you what, write up a business plan and come back and see me and we'll talk. And so um, long story short, that's what happened. And um, here I am today, seven years later. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing um, all of that information with us. Um, as I stated earlier, um, students will absolutely take value in this conversation about your career path. And that is a, an amazing journey that you've taken um, to become now an owner and an entrepreneur um, um, owning your own business. Can you tell me just a little bit about what makes you excited about your work? Sure. You know, what really makes me excited about my work is I, I even when I was working in an office, I realized that it really wasn't for me. I like being out. I like meeting different people and engaging with the public. Um, but what I really get excited about is, is the fact that I'm in an industry that is on the front lines of helping people combat a potentially fatal disease, which is lung cancer. And so radon is the second leading cause of lung cancer in non-smokers. 
odds are if you or anyone listening have ever heard of someone who has passed away from lung cancer and they didn't smoke, chances are it was because of radon. Uh, radon, if you don't know, it's, um, it's basically caused by uranium decaying in the soil. And the progeny of, of, the uran of uranium decaying in the soil is that it produces lead, polonium, and bismuth. When lead, polonium, and bismuth combine, it creates radon gas. And that is what is deadly. It's a class A carcinogen. So when we breathe it in uh, and it breaks down further, it uh, creates little pulses of radiation inside the body that can cause cell damage. And that cell damage is what can lead to lung cancer. And so I'm excited that we get to combat that and potentially help save lives. That's amazing. I'm learning something new today. Um, in, even in my home, I know that we had to have a radon inspection prior to us, you know, purchasing the home. And I just never really knew the, the information behind it. I just knew that it was necessary. Right. Mm -hmm. And so I appreciate you um, breaking that down for us and really explaining the value um, in, in that, in that, um, service and in, in that inspection. Can you describe to me what your average day is like? Um, it's important for, you know, students to understand when they decide on a, a career path, what's the day to day? Like, what would you say, you know, from the time that you start work to the end of your day, what does that look like for you? Well, in, in average day, um, I'd say in the summertime when we're really busy, is that I wake up around probably 5, 5.30, something like that, have my morning cup of coffee to kind of wake me up a little bit. That's my peace before the storm. And then um, I go to my desk and sometimes I will have uh, uh, estimates um, of jobs that I went on. Uh, I need to send that out or I will return emails or um, text messages to to, to customers around 6, 6.30. Um, and then around, uh, around seven o'clock or so, I get my work clothes on and I go out to my truck and I basically load up for the day. Uh, and then uh, after I do that, I still have to make another stop to either Home Depot or Menards and gather material for my job. job some, certain materials I don't stock here um, I just get it as I need it. And so um, I'll, I'll go to Home Depot, Menards or Lowe's and stock up on some materials there. And then I'll get to my job site typically somewhere between like nine and 10 o'clock. And then um, an average job takes me uh, from say 10 o'clock all the way until around anywhere from two to six o'clock in the evening, depending on how big it wow. is. Um, but if it's a smaller job, we're typically done around two, three o'clock. Now, during that day, um, I get calls. And one thing that I've, I've learned over the years is that you got to take these calls, even if it interrupts your work progress, because people don't wait around for you. Um, mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people say, well, I'll let it go to voicemail. I'll return it later. Don't do that. Try to answer your calls as they come as they come in, because people will just go to the next. If they can't reach you uh, and they're in a hurry for your service or product, they'll go to the next person. Sure. So I, I, I interrupt my day, whatever I'm doing. Sometimes I'm up on a ladder. Sometimes in, I'm in a dark crawl space or whatever, I, wherever the job takes me at that time. And I answer my call and then um, I will set an appointment for later on in the evening or very, or the next day. And so Oftentimes what happens when I get done at say, this is say three o'clock. Well, I'll come home, shower up, change clothes, and then I'll have to go to my estimates. And so estimates are people that have called me and said, hey, Shan, we've got a radon issue. We're selling our house or we just want it done for health concern reasons. And uh, we'd like uh, a quote on getting the work done. So I'll go to their house. Um, give them a quote, and then um, I will email them um, a, a quote later on that evening or the very next morning. And um, 
that's how we get our work. So that's that's a typical day. And then uh, later on that night when I uh, get home, again, there's oftentimes more emails I have to respond to or just some administration stuff that I need to do. And that's due to you being the owner of your business. So yeah, we're a small outfit, so I, I don't have the luxury of having administrators and sales reps and people like that. So I'm a one man band is what I tell people. So yeah, I do it all. And um, that's what my typical day is like. Thank you for, for sharing that. So you indicated that there is state licensing and that there is a very difficult state test. Can you tell me just a little bit about the training as well as um, the, the testing that's involved and in your experience with that? If I'm a student that's looking to go into this, this career field, what should I be preparing for in regards to um, the preparation and licensing? Well, it, it helps if you have some background in construction. Um, it's not a necessity, but it, it will help you. Um, as far as preparing for the test, uh, there is study guides. Uh, okay. There's a booklet. Um, as a matter of fact, I have it right here. This is the study guide, basically. Wow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So... Um, it, it, it's, 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 it's big. And I had to read this thing probably seven times front to back. It's a lot of information because it's, um, it's science-based, it's construction-based. Uh, and so they, they, they cover all of these, uh, factors when they test you and, uh, there's no wiggle room, either you, either you fail or you pass. And so, um, that's basically it. But before you take that test, what you're going to end up doing is you're probably going to end up working, obviously, for a radon mitigation company. And I, and I would suggest that you work for that company at least six months to a year so that the things in the book will, will make sense to you. It'll click. A lot of the stuff will just automatically click. You're like, oh, okay, this is why we do this and this is why we do that. But if you're just have an interest in radon and you, and you don't work in the industry for a while, it's like a foreign language. Gotcha. So that's, that's, that's my recommendation is to get some experience first. Uh, you got to crawl before you walk. So um, do your research. If you're interested in it, um, call a radon company, call a mitigator like myself, uh, schedule a day of observation where you can go out in the field and firsthand see what a day in the life is like and then um, look around for a job someone will hire you um, you'll get on and you, you learn the trade slowly and then once you feel like you're you're walking instead of crawling then that's the time where you say you know what let me let me get my license so that I can do jobs on my own awesome awesome well, in the field of career and technical education, um, many of our CTE teachers are um, teaching students about employed, employability and essential skills. And a lot of those skills are communication, time management, problem solving, um, things that employers are looking for um, in technical competencies like radon mitigation, but also those employability skills. So you talked about um, being able to meet new people and not being afraid to talk to real estate agents. What other skills would students need to be successful in this career? Well, um, I've broken it down into basically three, three separate categories. Um, professionalism and affability. But first of all, before I get into that, I want to say that the first thing is, is you got to have a vision and you have, you got to have a goal and, and with, without a vision for how you want to get there and, and goals, you're just kind of just walking blindly. And so that's, that's the most important thing. Um, but uh, I, I touched on it earlier. Um, you you, you got to have a way to get business. And so you, you get business through other people, but other people have 
other people that they could get their business to as well. So what is going to separate you is your professionalism and your affability. And professionalism is just things like obviously showing up on time. If sure. you're going to be late, call or text that person and let them know, hey, I'm, I'm, leaving, I'm, I'm leaving my appointment now. I'll be five or 10 or 15 minutes late. Because if you don't do that, and you show up five minutes late um, after the fact, you're already discounted. Whether they tell you or not, you're already discounted. But you, if, you, if you let them know ahead of time, then that shows that you're accountable. And so even if you are five or 10 minutes late after, the, after that point, you've already covered yourself. So cover yourself first, not on the back end. Um, affability. People, people like to do business with people who they like. And people like people that are friendly, kind, and courteous. And people also like to do business in which they have some sort of connection with, right? And so if you know how to draw those parallels with people, if you know how to draw those lines, chances are the people are going to like you. First of all, your professionalism, professional, just like how I covered it first. And now you're also likable. And so now at that point, typically all you got to do is show people that you know how to do what you came there to do on a professional level. So now this is where your craftsmanship and knowledge comes into place. You got to be good at what you do because they're going to want to see, okay, Shan, I like you, but what does your work look like? Well, sure. I've got a catalog of photos and videos that I can show them that the work that we produce is second to none. So now I've proven that, okay, not only do you like me, um, my work is good too. Plus I can also show them that I've got pretty much all five-star reviews on Google, Yelp, and Facebook. So I've got that credibility to back me up. And then on the back end, after you've obviously gotten the business, did the, biz did the work for the, for the customers, now there's the customer service aspect of it, the, the, the follow-up. They may send you a text message. They may call you, hey, Shan, my, my system is making noise. Or, hey, Shan, uh, I noticed there's something off. Can you help me? Well, you, you can't blow them off. You can't take three, four, five days to respond. Right. Because now the, not only will you not get a referral from those people, which is uh, essential to any business growing, um, your, your customer service ratings go down and they may give you a bad review. So your follow-up skills have to be impeccable. Again, like returning emails properly, uh, problem solving, and just showing people that you care, showing people that, you know, they weren't just business, that this is a relationship now and I'm in it from the, for the long haul with you. And I, I think that if you, you cover all those aspects of it, then you'll be good. Uh, but also the operations of it, you, 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 that's very important too, because if you get behind on, on your clerical stuff, on your operations, that could come back and bite you in the butt. So yeah, professionalism, affability, craftsmanship, customer service, and operations. Um, if, you, if you touch on all those factors, you should be fairly successful. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so we're going to take a, a little bit of a pivot because I think that this information is extremely valuable. Could you talk to us just a little bit about some of the challenges in your work and how you overcome those challenges? What are some of the things that aren't so fun? Actually, I just just touched on it. For me, it's the operations because <laughs> you know it, it's it's the part of the business that I just... I just don't like doing. I, I, I love going out and getting the business. That That's fun. Um, I, I love doing the work and then cashing the checks afterwards. That's really fun. Uh, and even, you know, customer service. You know, I, I like helping people out. Um, I, I, I especially like when people thank me afterwards. And oftentimes they tell me, hey, Shan, you know, I, I, I'm going to tell my uncle about you or my cousin. I know 
some I know a realtor uh, down the block. I'm going to tell them about you. And and my and because of my customer service skills, my business have been able to grow, or ma- mainly organically over the last seven years. Um, but the operations part is my <laughs> my Achilles heel. Uh, so that's that could be a challenge. If if you're someone that's naturally likes the desk and and that type of work, then that won't be a challenge for you. Um, but for me, that's that's a challenge. And how do you overcome that challenge? Just <laughs> or is by, it still a work in progress? It, it's kind of a work in progress, but really just setting new goals for myself, just challenging myself. Like, okay, I know this is a weakness of mine. Y- your mind, your spirit will tell you like, okay, okay, Shabina, okay, Shannon, okay, okay Tom, Dick, or Harry, y- you, need to, you need to brush up on this. And if you don't brush up on it, it's going to be a thorn in your side, right? It's not going to go away. It's going to be that itch. It's always, you're always going to need to scratch it. And so if you want that itch to go away, you, you just got to improve on it. And so that's, that's basically what it is. It's just doing a lot of, uh, if you're in a prayer, pray, meditation, just a lot of thinking of, okay, what do I need to do to improve? Because everyone wants to be successful. Everyone wants to be as, as successful as they possibly can be. And so uh, you, you got to continually analyze yourself to see, okay, where are my strengths and what are my weaknesses are? And you got to be good at identifying those and, you know, sharpening your strengths, uh, but also attacking those weaknesses. That's, that's what you have to do. I think that's really great advice. So we've talked a lot about your career. We've talked a lot about your, um, your business. We've talked a lot about your work. How do you celebrate? How do you celebrate your successes? Um, just a little pat on the back. No, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, what I what I do is my how do I celebrate my successes is I, I I share them, and because when you when you share your successes, um, other people can get excited for you and sometimes share that success. And, then, and again, you're in business, right? And so what, what, how I look at it is my business comes from mainly referrals. That's customer referrals. And that's also people that are in homes before me. So it, so you'll get the totality of what I'm trying to say. Um, our business is largely uh, real estate transaction driven, meaning that, um, how most people even find out about radon is they get ready to buy or sell a home like myself, (laughs) like yourself. And during that inspection process, um, either the buyers or, or or an attorney or someone will say, Hey, you probably need to do a radon test because that cut that can come back to bite you because there is a radon disclosure act uh, in, in your, in your, uh, in your, in your papers. So you have to disclose whether or not, uh, if if you know if your home has a radon issue or not, and if you say no, I don't know, well then they're going to say, well you need to find out. And if you if you say yes, there is an issue, then they're going to say, well you need to get it fixed. And so the radon testers and the um, the realtors and the home inspectors are on the front line. Those are the people that the customers usually turn to and say, well, I don't, I don't know anything about radon or who does it. Can you refer me some, someone? And they typically will say, yeah, I can refer you Shan from clean air radon systems, you know, after they've conducted the test and perhaps that test has failed and now they got to get it mitigated and that's where we step in. And so um, what I do is I keep in touch with all of those people via LinkedIn via my Facebook business page and via my um, Instagram business page. And so I know that if I don't keep in touch with those people some sort of way, they'll eventually forget about me because Mm -hmm. oftentimes these realtors and so forth, they only need me a couple of times a year. And if six months or eight months or a year goes by before they needed another guy to come in, then they're like, man, who's that radon guy again? I forget. Right. But, but and so I, I, every, every person that I build a relationship with professionally, they're, 
they're linked to me on one of those three plat platforms. And so every time I get a new review, oftentimes when we do a new home and the system looks really crisp and clean, um, I'll post that on those platforms so that those people can see. And because people also want to refer business who uh, business to people who they know is successful, who they know is good at their job. And so obviously if you're getting five star reviews and you post that online, that that's a cue to these people that, Hey, this guy is, you know, this guy's pretty good. He's, he's, um, he's continually getting uh, good reviews. His work looks crisp and clean. Um, I'm going to continue to use that guy. And sure. so that's how I, I celebrate my successes is I, I, I try to share them. So essentially it also comes full circle because of your, your, um, your education and marketing. So you've become your own best marketing tool. You have to, you got to a closed mouth. Don't get fed, you know? So you got to open your mouth and you got to shout out and you got to confidently brag about what you do. Um, so that people will know. Awesome. Awesome. So our final question, um, I always like to ask is what's a hidden thing um, about your job that no one may know? Is there anything that might be a little, um, you know, if you're thinking about this career pathway and you're not um, sure of, you know, what the career all encompasses, what's the little hidden things that someone might not know about your job? That's, uh, I, I thought about that question. Um, they, they may not know that, uh, well, a lot of people didn't even know it exists. I'm, I'm sure a lot of people listen to this or be like, what's radon? I've never even heard of radon. So, you know, everyone knows what a plumber is. Everyone knows what an electrician is. Everybody knows what an HVAC person is. But uh, there's still a lot of people, even grown adults, that have never heard of radon until they got ready to sell their home. And so, um, you know, the industry in itself is still, even though it's over 30 years old, it's still got a, a, a ton of ton of room to grow. Um, I guess one of the hidden things that people may not know is that um, I, I alluded to cr one, one of the pillars that you have to be good at earlier is craftsmanship is um, a lot of people don't under don't realize how much work it is. It's a lot of, it, it's, it's not easy. A, a lot of people, you know, I show them what they do and they say, oh, well, it's just some, you know, a fan and some piping, you know, it's, why is it X amount of dollars? You know what I mean? And I'm like, well, you know, that's the growing, the, the, the going rate for whatever job it is, blah, blah. Um, but I, I can't tell you how many times I've gotten done with the job at the end of the day, I'm, 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 I'm sweaty. I got cobwebs in my hair. I got probably a couple cuts on my hand and they tell me, well, hey, Shan, you know, I, I'm sorry about what I said earlier. It's this is a lot of work um, because we're we're sealing up cracks. So we're on our hands and knees. Oftentimes we're caulking. So our hands get dirty. Um, we're doing uh, some construction work. Uh, we're doing a little bit of plumbing work. We're doing a little bit of, an, of electrical because the fans are electric. So you got to know how to do electrical and then. Oftentimes these jobs, you know, some of these big homes, you got to know how to run pipe in a way that uh, looks crisp and clean and is professional. And so um, it's more work than what a lot of people realize it is, is what I would sum it up and say. Thank you so much for sharing um, that information. I also want to take the opportunity to thank you for joining us today on the Career Pathway um, Trailhead series. And so um, if, if there are any final words that you would say to students who are looking to go into this career field? Just do your research, um, look at videos online, um, analyze everything that I just said that that kind of goes into it. If you're not afraid to get your hands dirty and, and, and come home sweaty, because I, I, I know the narrative has changed over the years and which I'm grateful for because, you know, Sabina, when we was coming up, it was pretty much college or bust. No one really even talked about the trades that much. Absolutely. And um, ha had I known better, 
if I could reverse time, um, I probably wouldn't have went straight to trade school um, it, because I've, I've just realized over the years, I'm just more suited for that, that world more so than um, the, the marketing world that I thought I was going to go into. And so um, that's what I would say. Just, just do, do your research, uh, call a radon company, have a conversation with some people, um, ask to go on a day of observation so that you can go out and uh, see a day in the life. And then that's the case, apply to some radon companies and, um, and get on. And there you have it. Awesome. So I give just a few seconds in between so that I have the ability to edit. I am going to now circle back to the beginning and redo the introduction just for myself. So you can just sit tight and smile if you want to. Um, but there was some information that I did not put in the initial introduction. So the recording will continue, but it'll be edited out at the end. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Good afternoon. I am Shavina Baker, and I am the diversity, equity, and inclusion educator for the Illinois CTE project team. And I would like to welcome you to the virtual trailhead series for career pathways. In collaboration with the Illinois State Board of Education, we come to you today with Shan Willis, who is the owner of Clean Air Radon Systems. During COVID, many of our students were not able to experience and go out to work-based learning or job shadowing and internships. Therefore, we created this series to give an opportunity for students to be able to watch videos from individuals who are from industry. So today we will have a discussion in regards to what it takes to become a radon mitigation technician. And so that's the intro that I needed. I am going to stop recording. Okay.